Good afternoon. I'm Karen Cipido, Editor-in-Chief of Cardiovascular Research. It is my pleasure to welcome here with us this afternoon Professor Gerard Ambos Antoniades from the University of Oxford's Division of Cardiovascular Medicine. Professor Antoniades received the Outstanding Achievement Award of the Council of Basic Cardiovascular Sciences of the ESC. My congratulations. This award honors a basic researcher in the cardiovascular field who has made outstanding accomplishments and contributions in the early stage of his career. Young scientists are quite interested to hear from people like him. Therefore, joining us is Dr. Gemma Villahur from the Cardiovascular Research Institute in Barcelona, the CSIC, and she is a leading member of the Scientists of Tomorrow. Dr. Villahur. Thank you, Professor Karen Cipido. First of all, uh, it is a real pleasure to interview uh, Professor uh, Caralambos Antoniades, and um, I want to uh, deeply um, congratulate you for this outstanding uh, achievement award, which indicates that you have kindly contributed to advancing the, the research nowadays. So from a researcher point of view, uh, I wonder if you could just summarize which have been your your key steps or your discovery, which have led you to, to the day today. Thank you, Gemma. Thank you, uh, Karin, for the introduction. Um, yeah, looking into the milestones in my career, I would say that uh, the most important milestone was publication of my very first paper. That was uh, when I was still a medical student. And actually, it was in a, a journal without an impact factor. It was in a small journal. It was about neuroscience. It was not even about cardiology. But that really got me into science. And when I published that paper, I made a decision that I want to become an academic. Then I would say the next big milestone was when I won, won my first Young Investigators Award of the ESC. That was in 2007. And the big milestone was really when I was moved to Oxford. In 2010, I got my uh, intermediate fellowship, and then I followed uh, an academic career in the UK. So these were the three main, main big milestones in my career. And then the fourth is today. <laughs> I completely understand. Um, and so um, do you consider this would be the main challenges you have had to overcome to reach at this stage? So I had to go through all the challenges that every young investigator has to go through. The first challenge that every young investigator has is to get their first salaried post in research. Um, and that's because when you start uh, from the beginning, you need to really convince people that you have potentials. You don't have a good CV. You are just the same as everybody else. And then you have to convince people that you have potentials and that they have to invest on you. And this is the biggest challenge, really. Uh, that a young scientist can have. And that uh, I, I passed through this phase about uh, 10 to 15 years ago, really. Um, the other big challenge was uh, to become an uh, independent investigator. And that challenge is faced by most of the postdoctoral fellows that um, are now in, uh, in academia and research to get your first grant as a PI and then to set up a group that's the biggest challenge of all, and of course, to manage it. Um, really, I, I completely agree with the first of them, especially which I'm involved now. And the thing is that um, for you, what are the most rewarding things in research? In research? Because I hope, like as most of us, it's very completely uh, difficult to, 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 to feel always happy with doing research and some, sometimes it's exasperating to, to do that. What is your opinion of that? Well, research gives you uh, a lot of sadness because if you do honest and good research, then um, by definition, you have a lot of failures. Many experiments don't work, many hypotheses failed, but you need to see the good side, the good side of things. If you see the good side of things, then you uh, learn from your mistakes and then you come back. The most rewarding thing is to get your ideas published accept it, and then it's even more rewarding to see your ideas being implemented in the research of other people and maybe changing clinical practice if we go beyond that. Uh, this is the great ple greatest pleasure, really, that uh, an academic can have to see his ideas and his research, his work or her work to become practice. 
to be implemented in, uh, in the guidelines, etc. Uh, I'm sure you also felt very, re felt very rewarding when you were aware and you heard that you have won the Outstanding Achievement Award. Yes, that was one of the, of the great, greatest moments really of my life because I've been to this Congress, to this Congress for many years now. Uh, I have always been to the uh, poster receptions. I was always, well, I always admired the people who uh, were receiving this award every year. I never thought that I was going to be one of them one day. So yes, um, it's my great pleasure and I'm really thrilled for uh, receiving this award really. So as, as a scientist of tomorrow and you as a founder within the scientists of tomorrow, uh, what would be your suggestions to that uh, young investigation and clinicians that aim to pursue a research career, especially in the early stages? So what I would advise them is uh, if they like research, if they like science, they need to go for it and they need to make the next step, they need to dare. They need to uh, take the opportunities and they need to pursue what they want to do. Uh, more, most importantly, however, is to understand what they really want with their career. Not all scientists are made for academics, not all scientists are made for industry. So they need to make this decision early on and follow the path that best fits into what they really want to do with their life. Science will not bring um, income, will not make them rich, uh, but, but it's more rewarding, that's my personal opinion, because you contribute to science, you contribute to your uh, area of uh, specialty, and uh, this is the most rewarding thing that they can ever have, really, from their uh, job. It's very satisfactory for their job. So the thing is that from a researcher point of view, I would say that uh, the, the most important have, have you have to have in mind is that you have to work, work and work. Do you really think that the most the work, the better, regardless you don't have that economical input? Yes. You have to work, but you also have to think. So it's not only work. Uh, without hard work, you will not achieve anything in, in the research, you will not achieve anything in academia really. However, you need to work in a clever way, in a structured way, so that you produce the maximum and the best possible quality of data, of results, of publications, etc. Hard work is a key component of success, but it's not the only component. It's one of the major things that will determine whether you become successful or not, but only by working hard it's not enough. You have to think carefully and you, have to, you need to have a strategy in your life. You need to know what you aim for and you need to go for it. And also when you design your research, it's very important to design it in a way that you will give, for example, what I use, always say to my fellows now is you need, to design, you need to design your experiments in a way that they will give high quality publishable results, positive or negative. And that's the key. Then your hard work will not be thrown to the bin, really, if uh, the, the study is not positive. And this is, um, this is a very, very challenging part of designing high quality clinical or basic science studies to give an answer at the end that will be of great interest to the scientific community, positive or negative. Would you include within this pack also the, the networking, the being active within the young community, especially the, those involved in research, do you think it has, uh, is a key aspect to build upon? Yes, uh, networking is important, uh, especially in clinical research. In clinical research, you have to uh, combine, uh, join forces really with other labs and you need to have a lot of collaborations. With basic science, it is again very, very important, but it, uh, very high quality research can be done even in a single lab. So yes, it's very important, uh, it's crucial, but it depends again on the kind of research that you are doing. So just uh, to end up, I would like to, uh, to ask you if you could offer an advice to those young researchers who someday would like to potentially uh, try to get the Outstanding Achievement Award. What would that would be? To chase their dreams. So to make sure that they go for what they really want and uh, not to be afraid to dream about uh, winning an award like this. So I think they are wonderful words that you have to apply in the lifetime. So thank you so much for your wonderful interview. It has been a real pleasure again. And just say thank you, Karin.